Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Atom Seminar. Uh, today, we have the great pleasure of welcoming Professor Andres Mejia. Uh, Professor Mejia is doctor in science engineering from Universidad de Concepcion, uh, where he is currently associate professor in the chemical engineering department. Uh, his research interests uh, include interfacial behavior, thermodynamics of phase equilibrium, and theoretical thermodynamics in mixtures at subcritical and critical state. So once again, welcome Professor Mejia. Thank you so much for being here with us today and please feel free to start the presentation. Thanks, uh, thanks Fred for the good evening and thanks Fred and the Atom for the, this kind of very nice invitation. It's an honor to stay with us in this, in this meeting. Let me share the, my presentation. And the, the main topic of today is, uh, I would like to show our interrelated approach for exploring the interfacial property of food mixtures. <clears throat> the outline of my presentation, I will give a general background of the interfacial properties and how we can determine the interfacial property in, in fluid mixture. First, I will describe some experimental device, some aspect of the theory and the molecular simulation specifically molecular dynamic simulation. Then I select three different kind of mixture that uh, keep our attention in the last years in our lab. And finally, we present to the conclusion of this collaborative work. First of all, the most fundamental interfacial property of fluid mixture are the interfacial or surface tension and the interfacial concentration profiles. In order to describe the interfacial property let me consider a binary mixture formed by component one and two, <clears throat> where the most common behavior of the fundamental interfacial properties can be characterized by the following role, rules. First, in general terms, the more volatile component is the less dense. In other words, if you have two different components, component one and two, and the component one display low, uh, bigger uh, pressure vapor, uh, vapor pressure of the component two, then the surface tension of the component one is lower than component two. And the second general rules is the mixture with positive deviation from the row uh, low display negative deviation from the interfacial tension ideality. The third general behavior is that at, uh, at the isothermal condition, if the interfacial tension of component one is lower than component two, Usually the first derivative is lower than zero. In summary, this figure show the general behavior or usual behavior of the surface tension in mixture. The second important uh, property is the interface, interfacial concentration. Usually we have two times of the interfacial profile. One is without maximum, is this common for pure fluid and some components and Sometimes we obtain a maximum in this profile that denotes the surface activity or absorption along the interfacial region. Mm -hmm. For the case of three phases equilibrium, for example, vapor liquid, liquid equilibrium, we have different tension that is, are related with the surface tension and the bulk phase equilibrium. For example, if you fix the pressure, we have two vapor liquid equilibrium, one liquid liquid equilibrium, and the connection between both phase equilibrium and Liquid liquid equilibrium is the vapor liquid equilibrium where we can find three different tensions. One is the vapor with liquid one, vapor with liquid two, and liquid liquid. This situation can be visualized in the Clapeyron diagram. A low temperature a pressure, we can observe that we have a small uh, drop in the between the vapor and liquid one but when we increase the temperature or pressure we can obtain the waiting point when the liquid two is forming a film between liquid one and vapor and the critical end point one phase disappear and we have just one interfacial tension this situation can be summarized by three different kind of transitions zero order transition first and second order visually we can observe that if you have Zero order transition, we obtain complete weighting. And for this case, we move to partial to weighting transition. <clears throat> this kind of behavior is related with the phase equilibrium. For example, 
In the left side, we can see that as the temperature increases, the vapor and liquid two reach a critical endpoint and it's connected with the liquid one. In this case, we can observe the its surface tension of the vapor liquid one and liquid one and liquid two is coming to the same value. And the vapor liquid equilibrium for the component one go to zero. In the second case, we obtain the critical endpoint with the liquid one and liquid two, and the, this mixture is in equilibrium with the vapor liquid. In order to describe this kind of different situation, we have three different options. One is the experimental device it's called tensiometer. Second, we have theory, square gradient theory, and self equation of state, or the FTA equation with the any okay, equation of state and molecular simulation. In our lab, we have different tensiometer, and we select the tensiometer depend of the system we need to explore. For example, for mixture mixture system at atmospheric pressure, you usually use the maximum bubble pressure tensiometer. In this kind of device, we inject a gas flow, usually nitrogen, and with the dimension of the different uh, tubes and the different pressure, we can calculate the surface tension. A second option is nice, very nice option for liquid-liquid system with the called the spinning drop tensiometer. In this case, we have a heavy phase and we inject a light phase and we put in the rotation the, the, the system. With this information and the density of the bull phases, we can obtain the surface tension for this kind of system. Finally, one of the most beautiful like, device that we have is the pendant drum tensiometer. This device can be used for uh, measuring vapor liquid, liquid liquid, and liquid liquid vapor system as a function of temperature and pressure. We can reach high pressure and uh, 100 degrees in temperature. In this case, we obtain the silhouette of the drop and by using the density of the phases and the dimension of the drop, we can calculate the surface tension. For example, in the liquid vapor, we have the density of liquid and density of the vapor and this function. For the case of liquid, liquid is the same idea, but we replace the liquid, the density of the liquid one and liquid two in order to calculate the surface tension. Finally, for three-phase system, we have three different uh, interfaces, vapor liquid one, vapor liquid two, and liquid one and liquid two. For experimental details, <clears throat> this is a, a reference that we report how we can uh, obtain surface tension from the experimental measurement. One of the options to describe interfacial behavior is the square gradient theory, which is a specific case of DFT theory. And here we use the square gradient theory plus the self equation of a state. As we can see in this expression, we have two different terms. The first one is the Helmholtz energy density for the homogeneous fluids, which in this world or usually use this for <clears throat> the self equation of state. And the second part or the red part is combined by the influence parameter for, for, for few, uh, pure fluids. We can obtain this value from correlation or from experimental data and across parameter that we put zero or fix it by binary mixture, surface tension of binary mixture. In order to apply this expression, we follow this, the following procedure. First, first we given the EOS parameter, we solve the phase equilibrium according to the, this expression. And with this information, we calculate the surface tension profile by solving this kind of differential equation. By using the interface profile, we can calculate the surface tension or the relative key absorption, depending on what we are looking for. For more details, an open source in Python code is described in the, in the reference that put I in the, in the bottom of the page. In this, in this paper, we describe how we can obtain all the prediction from the square gradient theory, and you can download the code and usually for different kind of situation. And also we include some several example in order to the, the user can be use this code. Finally, <clears throat> this kind of interrelated approach, you use molecular dynamic simulation where you usually use three different kind of 
uh, suites, DL poly, LAMPS, or Gromax. And in this kind of uh, simulation, you use from 600 to 10,000 sites, and the dimension of the box is 10 times the maximum value of sigma in two dimension, and the <clears throat> LC is five to 15 times the other two dimension in order to obtain a space for the vapor liquid and the interface region. In order to reduce the effects of the cutoff, usually you use the six times sigma, and usually you use the Noset thermostat and the equilibration is from 10 to 20 nanoseconds and the production is 50 to 80 nanoseconds. With this information, you carry out the simulation in the MBT ensemble or MPAT ensemble. In order to obtain interfacial property, you usually apply the temperature quench procedure. In this case, we use the, the uh, SAF uh, prediction in order to obtain the density of the each phase. We obtain the concentration that we did this, uh, we, we like to simulate and put the simulation at high temperature. Then we quench the temperature to the desired temperature and we wait the system uh, reach the equilibrium. In order to obtain the, the, the density, profiles, we devise our simulation box in different slides, and we calculate the density by using the expression that you can see in this equation. In order to calculate the interfacial tension, we can apply two different approaches. One is the uh, thermodynamic truth. In this case, we perturbate the interfacial area, and with this approximation, we can obtain the surface tension. This procedure can be used for system in liquid-liquid or liquid vapor system. For other kind of interfaces, we need to uh, describe the interfacial tension by the Kirwood uh, method. In this, in the Kirwood method, we obtain the normal and ten, uh, tangential pressure for the vapor liquid system. And with this information, we can calculate the surface tension by the, the integral. Some details about the, how can use the molecular simulation for interfacial properties can be described in the in a recent paper. Uh, it, this paper also includes some, some information for uh, different uh, suites in simulation. For the case of liquid-liquid vapor, we have three different uh, interfacial regions. One is the liquid one, liquid two, liquid two and vapor, and liquid one and vapor. In this case, the only route that we can apply is the Kirwood ten, uh, tensor, where the normal and pre, um, tangent pressure can be seen in this figure. And by using the same procedure by integration, we can obtain the different value for the surface tensor. With this kind of three different approach, in order uh, can be used to describe the interfacial property for several mixtures. One of the first time of the examples is mixture without a stationary point in, in interfacial tension. For example, in this figure, we can see the concentration profile, for example, plus decaying, and we can see very good agreement between experimental simulation and theoretical prediction. And also, as we can see, as the mole fraction increase, the behavior of the interface decreases. Also, this information is compared with the experimental data and also the molecular dynamic simulation. We can see very nice results between these this approach. And also, we can observe the surface, the absorption, the Gibbs absorption behavior. And a second example is the zero to plus A cosine. And we can see the effect of the increased the pressure or mole fraction for CO2. And we can observe that both approaches predict very good uh, the, the enhancing of the surface activity of CO2 in the interfacial region. These results have been also compared with experimental data. And we can see in this figure very good agreement between experimental data, molecular simulation, and theory for interfacial tension and also for the GISP absorption. For further details, I put the reference in the bottom of the page. Finally, in this kind of system, 
In this figure, we can observe the behavior of methane with dodecane at two different levels of pressure. And we can see the absorption or the surface activity of methane in the interfacial region. These are results <clears throat> also compared with the experimental data and molecular simulation. As we can see, the interrelated approach provides a route to understand the interfacial property, difference and um, integral properties. But one of the most relevant, important issue to combine three different approaches is when the information with the experimental information is not available. For example, for the case of the water plus exchange, you can use the uh, pendant drop tensiometer and we obtain three different value of tension, but the temperature range is limited. Is this information is limited by the normal uh, the boiling temperature of the exane. Therefore, the question is how the interfacial tension go to the low temperature to the critical endpoint. In order to resolve this question, the first step we that you used with was to predict the behavior by using the theoretical approach, and then by using molecular simulation, we, we verify the result from the theory. Using this approach, we can calculate the weighting temperature. And in this range, in this in low temperature, we obtain very a partial weighting. And in high temperature, we obtain the perfect weighting behavior. And finally, on the critical endpoint, we obtain this kind of behavior. This is the main idea that you use three different approaches in order to extend the information from the, from the data. Next, in this in this in this system, we calculate the interfacial profiles at low temperatures and the near to critical endpoint. As we can see, molecular simulation can be brief information about the interfacial behavior of the three-phase system. A second very interesting situation is mixture with stationary point of the interfacial tension and temperature. According to our experimental result, we obtain a stationary point for the case of, for the case of alkanol plus, plus water. As we can see in the figure, the, at low temperature, the interfacial tension increases with the temperature and then decreases. This situation is observed for several kinds of alkanols. In order to explore what is the, 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 the relation, the the maximum value with the interfacial properties. We can calculate, sorry for my dogs. Sorry for my dogs. Oops. Sorry. Let me close it up. We obtain this kind of profile for the, the composition along the interfacial region. A second option, a second exploration was the esters. In this case, we obtain the same behavior. A low temperature, the temperature increase when uh, increase the temperature, and then the tension decrease with the temperature. As the similar than the other system, the interfacial properties display the same behavior when any a specific uh, surface activity. In order to explore what is the other proper properties in this kind of system, we carry out molecular dynamic simulation and we can observe here that the density is similar than predicted by the theory. And also the interfacial tension are very similar, but we can observe very different value in order uh, because the four fields that you use. But we can observe the same, the same behavior. In summary, we can conclude that the interfacial concentration profile displays no surface activity, and the interfacial tension is governed by the liquid-liquid type. For example, we can summarize the, our results by using this kind of general <clears throat> phase equilibrium. In this case, we obtain the surface tension with two a zero value, which is related with the critical temperature point in the liquid-liquid system, and the maximum value is related with the maximum value of the tension. 
Then the uh, another very interesting example is mixture with stationary point interfacial tension in mole fraction. This is ongoing work that I, I, we are exploring. What is the connection between phase and interface behavior? According to our results, for example, mixture with propanol by DBA display a minimum value of the surface tension and the theory predict very good agreement between experimental data simulation. Ethanol plus butylamine display a maximum value of the surface tension. Another example is ethanol plus octane. And we can observe here, we obtain different stationary point in the middle of the mole fraction of ethanol. A more exotic behavior is the ethanol with dodecane. We observe very, very nice results. In order to try to understand the, this kind of stationary point in the surface tension, we need to <clears throat> check the interfacial concentration and according to our results, this kind of system display no surface activity. And the stationary point in mole fraction is related with the phenomena that called aneotropy. The aneotropy is, an, is very similar to the case of the isotropy, but in this case, we obtain a stationary point maximum or minima in mole fraction. <clears throat> in the stationary point, we obtain the zero Gibbs absorption. That means the interfacial composition will reach a stationary point. In order to classify the anotropy behavior, we use two different kind or two different classes of the aseotropy, the anotropy, sorry. The first class and the second class. The second class is, uh, is related with the aseotropy. Sometimes with the uh, interfacial tension of the pure components have this very similar interfacial tension, we obtain a aneotropic point. This is the very similar to the phenomena called the Bancroft aseotropy. And the second is the first class which is related with the critical endpoint situation. As we describe in this figure, over the critical endpoint, we obtain the traditional uh, interfacial tension behavior, but we, when we reach the critical endpoint, we obtain the minimum value where the concentration of the set is near to the aneotropy. But lower the critical endpoint, we obtain this kind of three different tension due to we are lower the critical endpoint. Now we are working with the, some cases for this kind of uh, system in order to describe in a better way what is the phenomena that is involved in this kind of phenomena. In summary, in this work, we illustrate the advantage for using interrelated approach that combine experimental determination, theoretical modeling, and molecular simulation in order to describe the fundamental interfacial property. The main issue is the theoretical approach can be used to design experimental determination and molecular simulation, Theoretical prediction and molecular simulation provide a route to extend, as we showed before, the experimental determination where it is not possible to carry out measurement. Finally, molecular simulation provide external information to validate, to validate the theoretical results, and the interact, interactive approach allows to describe the usual and unusual behavior of the fundamental properties. This is a big summary that we spent the last 20 years in our lab. We have with the Marcela Cartes is the experimental one and some very nice students and colleagues. Thanks for the, your attention and I am open to the questions. Okay, Professor Andres, thank you so much for the presentation. We are now open to questions. If you wanna participate, please enable your microphone or write it down at the chat. Also our YouTube viewers can write it down too. So who is gonna be the first one? <laughs> I'm going to. Okay, go ahead, <laughs> Professor Fred. <laughs> Sorry for my dogs. <laughs> they don't fancy the interfacial properties. So. <laughs> First of all, Andrews, thank you for your, your uh, seminar. It's very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, I, I think it was too fast for me to, to follow all the ideas because I several new ideas and uh, several new results that I, I'm not uh, familiar with. Uh, 
So amazing seminar. I, I thank you very much. I, I probably am going to, to see this seminar again uh, several times. Uh, <clears throat> but let I ask you uh, two questions. One is, uh, I know that you use DFT uh, is, uh, to calculate interface tension directly. How you compare uh, your DFT calculations uh, with uh, uh, gradient theory? Uh, well, we can use the DFT calculation for- Because in gradient theory, yeah. you uh, make some approximation, no? Yeah. Yeah, this, this is true. So the, the, the square gradient theory is a particular case of DFT where some yeah. part of the expression is integrated and conduct to the equation of a state. And can you explain more? is the uh, interfacial problem. Sorry, sorry yes. just, can you explain more for the students uh, the, the idea for gradient theory and DFT so to be more? Uh, Let me show the main equation. Yeah. Yeah. Here we have the Helcom energy. <clears throat> In, in the square gradient theory, the Helmholtz energy is divided by two terms. In the DFT, it's just one term without any extra or fitting parameter. But in the square gradient theory, we use the correlation function in the homogeneous you know, you know, correlation function in order to describe the influence parameter. This is the simplification that you transform the DFT to the square gradient theory. The main advantage of the square gradient theory is more simple than DFT in order to predict a behavior of mixture, but need extra parameter. It's called the influence parameter that we need to fix from the experimental data or from correlation. This is the, the main difference between two different approaches. And in this kind of approach, the square gradient theory, the interfacial profile is given by the solution of the, 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 the main equation, but we don't need to uh, it, uh, use any external numerical procedure to obtain this kind of value. But this is the main, the, the main difference. And the origin of the square gradient theory is a Taylor expansion of the uh, Helmholtz energy around the equilibrium point, where you just consider the gradient uh, terms. By using this expression and the condition of the phase equilibrium, we obtain the, the, the main equation of the square gradient theory. This is a very <coughs> short summary of the square gradient theory which was proposed by Van der Waals at the end of the, the century. Yes, it's, yes. you can say that's more mean field than uh, DFT. Yeah, yeah. In a, in a well, sim, simplified way to, to explain. But yeah. uh, let me continue my questions. How you estimate this uh, beta uh, IG? Okay, uh, the, <clears throat> usually we can test two different values. Zero value is just for prediction in binary mixture. And in order to obtain this value from the, uh, for binary mixture, use the expression of or experimental data of surface tension. That means the square gradient theory is a correlative approach for binary mixture, but for ternary mixture, I don't have any ternary parameter in order to obtain the values. Sometimes, <clears throat> as we demonstrated some time ago, we can use the, the same parameter that using the SAT equation of a state to calculate the influence parameter for pure fluids. It's an advantage. And in some case, uh, we can reproduce the experimental data by using beta equals zero. In other case, we can use the binary mixture to fix the parameter for binary mixture, and then we can predict the ternary mixture. This is the, the, the capability of this equation, but it's just fitting from the experimental data or molecular simulation as well. Uh -huh. Okay, nice. Uh, one, uh, a second question is about molecular simulation. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, your results were very nice and we relate uh, the interface tension with phase equilibrium. That's very interesting uh, results. Uh, but uh, but the, my, my question is, uh, well, your examples, uh, the concentration of uh, the active component or so, uh, it's not so high. So the concentration at the interface is about the same as, or, or, well, the same order of magnitude mm -hmm. as the bulk phase. Yeah. So uh, you can take directly from molecular simulation the concentration magnitude. But my question is, uh, it's very common that we are simulating a uh, uh, tensile active substance. That yeah. the concentration <laughs> at the interface is much, much higher than the book phase. So you have no box to get uh, an equilibrium condition. Yeah. What, what do you think about this? Oh, this is, this is very difficult to simulate this kind of surface activity in the in this case, in order to, the, the main problem that we found was the define the, the concentration in the interfacial region, because as we can see, you, you don't have very clear what is the region in the, the surfaces. We need to work more in this kind of simulation. In this moment, we also, we are measuring some surfaces in our tensiometer. We, we working in this kind of problem, but it's not simple. Some theory has been proposed for describe this kind of situation, but from molecular simulation, this is a challenger and it's a new topic for, for me. <laughs> Thank you, Al. Let, okay. let people ask for you first. I have another, but let people ask. Okay, no one has raised the hand like in the in the chat. So so I have a question. Um, okay, go ahead, Professor Carlos. Thank you. Hello, Andres. Nice Hello, to Carlo. How are you? listen to you. So I guess you are in your house, uh, probably yeah. with your talk and with the beautiful views of the lake and, and the forest there. So, yeah, nice to, so nice to hear from you and very nice uh, presentation. So uh, I have a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first, the first one is uh, related to uh, the possibility of using eval sums for the Leonard John part of the potential, because you are using a very large cutoff. And mm -hmm. I would like to know your opinion about implementing some kind of uh, eval sum for the Leonard John. I think this is implemented in Gromax already and maybe LAMPS, but uh, I would like to hear about your opinion about that. And mm -hmm. second question is also technical. It's about when you get the density profile in simulation, uh, I think you have capillary waves, so it's a kind of tricky to define where is the Gibbs dividing surface because I, I expect that the liquid vapor interface is fluctuating even in the MPT ensemble and even more in the MPT ensemble. So I would like to know your thoughts about how to deal with these technical problems. Okay, for the first one, the AOL summation is always is a nightmare for interfacial or inhomogeneous fluids, especially for the case of vapor, vapor, vapor liquid, liquid system, and in general for inhomogeneous. We usually prefer use large cutoff and all this kind of simulation was carried out by using a me potential, cost grain me potential with where I don't use or I don't need the eval summation. I, avoid this kind of problem by replacing the force field by using uh, in the last part a uh, coarse grain uh, simulation. But uh, I need to think about the eval implementation for this kind of system. Um, for density, yeah, you are right. We sometimes observe some kind of capillary waste. As we can see, let me show one figure here. In this, here we can observe some, some ways in the density profiles. And we detect this kind of behavior when we are close to the critical lines of the mixture, but at low temperature, we can reduce the effect of the capillary waves in the surface tension. That's, that's the route that, that you use for this kind of simulation. But it's true, this, 
we can observe the some capillary weights and we need to check the the slide that you use for calculate the, the density profiles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have now a physical question just with this slide you have. Yeah. Uh, I, I am very interested in this case. You have the derivative of gamma with respect to temperature is zero. Mm -hmm. And I went to the Rawlinson Widom book and I found that this derivative in principle, if mm -hmm. I am not mistaken, is related to the uh, surface entropy. So yes. is it true that the surface entropy becomes zero at the maxima or I am missing something or what is, uh, could you comment on that? Yeah, according to the this textbook, yeah, the the first derivative of the but this this is the 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 entropy for the the surface entropy is will be zero for the maximum in temperature because the is defined by the the main minus the derivative of the surface tension with the temperature, and maybe it will be zero at the maximum value, according to this approach. Yeah, so, in, the, in the maxima value in temperature. Yeah, so that, uh, that's quite interesting. I don't know what is the physical meaning of that, but uh, I Neither found that I. This, <laughs> but, but this is uh, interesting. And yeah. my final question is, uh, how do you consider to go to ions and water and to look at the absorption and the behavior of ions in water, that would be very, very nice to have a look. Uh, I, I know some people has done already, yeah. but maybe yeah. you could, you could try to, had you, had you plan on doing somewhere on, with electrolytes in water and surface tension and absorption and all the, all of this or not? Well, the main problem was solved in a couple of days ago by new potential for Oxygen and hydrogen contribution for the for, for the kind of uh, calculation. This is the one of the your recent paper. Yeah, we need to explore this kind of contribution in the interfacial properties. We need to move to ions and surface activity components in order to obtain other information and use the capability of the molecular simulation. But you are right. This is a very interesting point, and we need to explore this kind of situation more than cost grain fluids or just uh, system without electrostatic or ions contribution yeah okay so thank you for the nice uh, presentation and give my regards to marcela and all the group in concepcion chile so thank, thank you, you carlos <laughs> so we have another question from from the audience Please, Professor Miguel, please uh, enable your microphone and ask the question. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Andres, for a, a very interesting talk. Um, I want It's more a comment than a question. I just wanted to pick up on Carlos' uh, second question about the, the capillary waves. So I don't know if you're aware, there are several methods that you can use called intrinsic analysis methods. Um, the, the first one to, to propose one of these was Pedro Tarazona uh, several years ago. Um, and Paul Jedlowski and myself and Marcello Sega have been working on a package called PyTeam, which is kind of a very handy analysis tool, which you can use to just, uh, you, you feed in uh, molecular simulation results trajectories based on exactly the kind of system that you're using. And it pinpoints the molecular interface, right? So the intrinsic interface of the, of the system. Uh, in each configuration, then you can average uh, by removing the capillary waves from the average, okay? Okay. Um, so maybe that's something that you, you can you can look into. Um, also, we, we showed for very simple systems that th there was there was a way if you do that, then you can extract the surface tension also from capillary wave theory, okay. which you can then match to the to the simulation results. So, uh, are you aware of those methods at all? Uh, no, just I read some paper sometimes ago, but but this is very nice information. I will review uh, check the. The, the war in capillary waves is a very nice topic. And I need to, to check the, the new advances in this field. Mm -hmm. Thank you okay. for the comments and the reference. I will look this this reference in the, in the website. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
So since I cannot see any more questions from the audience and from the YouTube viewers, so our time is almost over. I want to thank everyone for the discussion. And once again, thank you, Professor Andres, for the presentation. Thanks for the invitation. <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> thank you. OK. So, so bye bye to everybody. Thank you, Andres and Federico. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. So uh, our seminars okay. are, uh, let's, oh, the organization oh, is going to share a, a slide for, for me to. Okay, the next. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So our seminars are being recorded and posted on YouTube, of course, after they are invited to like through the agreements. Please, please check them out on our YouTube channel. This is our organization committee. We are responsible for inviting and communicating with the lecturers. We also handle social media, video editing, certificate rights, and hosting. Thank you all for being here today. We will meet again in two weeks at the seminar that will be given by Professor Fernando Escobedo. Uh, next week, we are, we are not going to have uh, an... Uh, same now because we are all be in the SPA Brazil Flow Assurance Technology Congress that will be will be happen here in Brazil, in Rio specifically. So the title of the the same now that will be given by Professor Fernando Escobedo will be announced soon. So see you there in two weeks and thank you all for being here today. <music>